Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, A Monk in Cloud. In this video, we are trying to host our resume on AWS EC2 instance with a CI CD setup using GitHub Actions. For this, you have four steps. First one is to create an EC2 instance and download the key pair. Second one is to create the secret in your repository. Third one is to add your GitHub action workflow. And the fourth step is to check how it works, right? So I have documented all the things on my blog. So this is my blogging site. So you can visit this one and I'll make sure to provide the link to this in the description box below. So whatever the code that I'm using for this particular video is well documented on this particular repository. I will also make sure to provide the link to this repository in the description box below. You can check that out. Okay, so the first step would be to create an EC2 instance. So for that, I have logged in to my AWS console and let me go ahead and create an EC2 instance. To do that, I'll click on EC2. Now I'll click on launch instance and I'll click on launch instance again. And I'll say web server or resume hyphen server. You can give whatever the name that you want. I'm going to select Ubuntu and instance type T2 micro is good enough. So I'm leaving it as default key pair. I'm going to create a new key pair. I'll click on create new and I'll say resume KP KP as in key pair and I will leave that as dot PEM and I'll click on create key pair and it will automatically download the key pair. So keep this key pair in a secured place so that you won't miss out on this, right? So this is very important. If you do not have this, your EC2 instance will not work, okay? So I'll close this one. Now I am uh, placing this EC2 instance in the default VPC, so I will not change anything here. And uh, I'm not changing anything on the subnet level also and I'm assigning a public IP, auto assign public IP is enabled by default. So I'm good with that. And firewall as in security groups, I'm gonna select the security group which is already there. So I'll click on that and I'll select Linux SG. Basically I'll show you what is there in this, uh, uh, you know, Linux SG. I have allowed SSS and port number 80 and 443. So I'll show you that. So after this, uh, everything looks good and uh, storage is also good. Uh, 8 GB is fine for me. So I'll go ahead and click on launch instance. So while it launches, I will try to show you the security group. Okay. So I'll come to uh, EC2 here and I click on security groups and I'll open Linux SG. So if I come down to inbound rules, if you see here, there are many things that are opened uh, just because I was testing few things, but the only things that you need is uh, SSH port 22 and your uh, 80 and 443. So these are the three things that you need to allow in the inbound rules. Okay. So these are all the things that you require here. Okay. Next, let's go to our instances. Let's see if the instance is running already or not. So the status check is still initializing. Let's give some time for it to get initialized and the status check should be two by two passed. Okay. I'll pause the video for some time and I'll come back once it is ready. All right. Now, if you see the status check two by two checks are passed. Okay. Now let's see what exactly we are trying to do, right? So if I go back to my GitHub repository, I have two files. One is index.html where I have the index document here and I also have some styling. Okay. So let me show you how exactly the uh, resume looks. Okay. So this is a simple site that we have, right? So just in, in the format of a resume. Okay. So I have summary here. I have skills. I have experience. All these things are added. If you want to enhance this, this is not a portfolio website. Remember, this is exactly the same as your resume, right? So if you want to add a picture here and do whatever you want, you can do that. But this is not your portfolio site. This is your resume, right? So in the form of website. 
So this is what we are trying to achieve. Let's say your name is, uh, you know, we have a web developer role right now, but in future you will be transitioned to software developer. So in, in that case, you have to update this site. So how will you do that? So, and uh, for that, you might need a downtime if that wants to be applied on the EC2 instance also. In our scenario, what happens if you just update the site here on your GitHub page, so automatically it will be picked up, the changes will be picked and it will be deployed on the EC2 server, right? Sounds cool, right? So you need not log in again and change the uh, code on the EC2 instance. Uh, we are achieving that using the CI CD process using the GitHub actions, okay? So that is our main intention. Now we have created the server and we have also downloaded the key that we already have. Okay, if I go here, you see uh, my key pair named resume-kp.pem is there in my folder, right? So I have created a separate folder dot keys and I've stored all my keys there, right? So I highly recommend you also doing the same thing. Okay, now let's do the second step. The second step would be to create the secrets in the GitHub for your repository. So what are the secrets that you need to create? I've also documented the same here. You can just refer this and you can add the appropriate content there. Okay, so let's go and do that one by one. So the first secret name that we need to create is the EC2 underscore SSH underscore key. So basically what is this secret? Secret is basically you are not disclosing what you are trying to what you are having the content instead you are storing it as a secret in the github repository itself okay so first key that we are trying to store is ec to ssh key so if you remember we downloaded the pm key right so that we need to store it as a secret so if you ask me why are we storing that so who will need to log into that ec2 instance on behalf of us, we are allowing the GitHub to log in and make changes, right? For that, we need to create the secret and uh, allow the GitHub repository to talk to the EC2 instance, okay? So let's see how to do that. I'll go back to my repository here. So remember, you need to make these changes on your repository where you are trying to achieve this, okay? Click on settings here. And if you come all the way down, you will see something called a secrets and variables. If you see there is a drop down, click on that. You will see actions, click on that. And here you need to create a new repository secret. So I'll just click on that and it will ask you for the name and the value. Okay, so here I'll place the name, sorry. I'll place the name as ec2 underscore ssh hyphen key. Here you need to paste the content of that key. Remember, as this is a demo, I'm showing the key pair, what is the value we have, but you should never disclose the key pair anywhere, right? So it is not at all recommended for you to show what, what you are storing there, okay? So I'm gonna open that on my Visual Studio code. And this is how it looks, right? So let me close this. This is how it looks. Just click Control A, Control C, and go to your repository paste the exact same content. Do not remove anything. Do not add extra uh, space or something, right? So just copy paste it. Do not show this to anyone, but as this is just for a demonstration, I'm gonna show you and I will be deleting it after this demonstration, okay? I'll just click on add secret now. The secret will be added, okay? So the next thing that we need, let's go back. Host underscore DNS. What is host underscore DNS? Every EC2 instance will have the public IPv4 DNS. So you can just copy this and paste it there, right? So that is also required, right? So if you do not have the IP address, how will you log into the EC2 instance, right? So we need that. So I'm gonna create a new repository secret again, and I'm gonna use the same name. I will tell you why we are using the same name at the end, okay? So I'll copy the public IPv4 DNS and also paste the same in the secret, okay? I'll click on add secret. That is also done. Next, let's go back to another one. So username, username, it would, if you are selecting Ubuntu machine, it will always be Ubuntu itself, right? So I'm gonna go and create a new repository secret here and I'll paste this username and Ubuntu, as I told, it is always Ubuntu. I will show you 
I'll paste this and I'll click on add secret. So if you want to verify, if you come all the way down, yeah, here if you see, it is mentioned as Ubuntu, right? So this is what we are using here, okay? So the next target directory. So as soon as you log in, what is the directory that you want to copy the content from the GitHub and place it into the EC2 instance? So I'm gonna use home as the directory, target directory. Okay, so I'll just go here and I'll click on another uh, repository secret. So I'll give that here and I'll give home. So just home, right? So I'll add the secret. So what we did, we created all the secrets that are required for a demonstration. Okay, so let's just verify that. So in fact, it should look something like this. So when, when you create, you should have all the secrets created. Okay, so if you see here, we have all those created. Next step would be to create the workflow. So I'll tell you what is workflow so you can create that. So here is the code, I'll just copy that. And this is the path that you need to use. So I'll go back to the repository. So workflow is just like your CI CD setup for GitHub Actions. So that would be uh, done using a YAML file. So you need to create a YAML file. To do that, you can just click on add file here and click on create new file. Okay, so you need to create a folder structure. I'll show you what is that structure looks like. So here, once you have, this is your repo name and here there is an empty uh, location. You can paste this, whatever we copied. For GitHub Actions, if that needs to work, you need to create a special folder directory. So that is .github slash workflows and the name of the YAML file that you are trying to create. So I'm using GitHub Actions EC2.yaml, okay? So now here you need to paste the content that you have. So now what is the content that you need to paste here? So let me go back to my blog site and I'll explain what we are trying to achieve here. So the final workflow uh, .yaml will look just like this. So what we are trying to do? We are try trying to trigger a deployment only when the code changes are made to the main branch. So in GitHub, you can create multiple branches. When there is a code change occurs on the main branch, only then push the changes to your EC2 instance. So how it is going to push the changes? It needs to have the secrets created, right? So the, or it needs to have the server information. So where it is, so we have stored that already in the secret and we are trying to read the secret in this particular para. If you see here, SSH private key, we are getting it from this secret, remote host, we are getting it here, user Ubuntu target directory is uh, your home, right? So that we are getting it here from the steps. I've defined a, a, a parameter called step and here we are mentioning these parameters, okay? Next. After getting all the contents from your GitHub repository, whatever the files we had, index.html, CSS, readme, all those files will be deployed into your EC2 instance home directory because that is our target directory. So after that, next we will execute some Linux commands. So this, this is the step that is going to do. So what we are trying to do, we are using the same secrets we are logging in, we are using the same username, we are using the same key. And here we are trying to update the system first and install Apache 2. So Apache, Apache 2 will be installed. Then we are starting the Apache 2 and we are enabling the Apache 2 in these two commands. Next, what we are trying to do, we are changing the directory to the home directory. Why home directory? Because that is where we are having all our files present, right? So we switch to home directory and from home directory, we are moving all the files from there to this particular location. So what is this location? This location is location where we have the default HTML page of Apache 2. So that is where your content will be displayed on the site. So this is where you can access all your website content, right? So for that, we are moving the content from home directory to this particular location, right? So it seems simple, but if you try to achieve this, right? So that will give you a whole lot of satisfaction. 
uh, from you right so just what you need to do is you can just copy this everything else is same okay i'll copy this and i'll paste it here okay so make sure you are using the same name in convention as that of me if not it will fail if even if it fails right to be trying to debug is another you know level of uh, satisfaction that we'll get okay so now i'll just click on commit changes and i'll hit commit changes so without even logging into your ec2 instance all the data will be taken and it will be pushed into your ec2 instance and by using your ec2 instances public ipv4 address you will be able to access the site okay now let's go ahead and test if it is working fine or not so let me go to the repository and if you click on actions you will see whatever it is happening if you see here automatically it triggered the job and it is creating the github actions ec2.yaml the first step is going on if you click on this it you, you will get the more information so what is trying what it is doing what and all we have configured it is working fine or not where exactly it failed all the things you will get to know once you go into that section is any failure it will give you a red mark here saying that it failed if it passes it you will give a, uh, it will give a green tick so that it passed right so let me go back and show you so if you see here uh, the push has been done to the ec2 instance and it is showing the green tick so let's go to our ec2 instance grab our public ipv4 address or the public ip dns and i'll paste it on my browser Okay, so you should be seeing the content that you have already deployed on your GitHub repository, right? Cool, right? So without even logging into the server, we were able to see this. Now let's make another interesting thing. So let's say my name is not John Doe. So instead what I'll do, I'll go ahead and change the name to a monk in cloud, right? So, or whatever the things. Let's say your resume looks like this now, but in future your skills are added. So in that case, you need to edit this site, right? So for that, you can go back to your GitHub site. Let's say you are trying to edit index.html. I'll click on edit here. Uh, I'll just say, I'll remove this one and I'll just add a monk in cloud okay so that is all i uh, need i'll just click on commit changes and i'll hit commit changes again so i made the code changes on main repository right so main branch so what happens automatically it will pick up the changes and it will start deploying again so if you want to verify go to actions again and if you see here update index.html is happening right now so it was pushed by me and it is still in progress you will see the uh, status also here now if you see there is a green tick available that means your update has been successfully done now let me go back to my site and i'll just refresh the site you should be seeing the content that you edited right so this is really cool if you want to enhance this one you can go ahead and add your own dns here if you see here i'm using uh, amazon public ipv4 dns but if you want to add you can uh, add your own pub uh, dns uh, for example resume.yourname.com or something like that right so that also you can do and you can also install ssh certificate ssl certificates which are freely available for you or you can also use aws certificates also right so that is for your uh you know uh, understanding and you can do more research on that and you can work on this i hope you learned something new in this project so although it was a very simple project but the process of learning this one is you know amazing i even i learned a lot of things i didn't know how to run the commands using this particular part so i explored this on myself and i got to know how it works so usually in the uh, sites and all they will mention what uh, updating this command and all but installing something and or, you know doing something like this is really amazing so i hope you enjoyed learning along with me if you are liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it among your friends thank you and i will see you in the next one with another project until then bye bye